today we're going to deal with a subject that is so familiar to all of us in here. And here it is. Here's our title slide today, Stress. Stress. We're going to be looking in the Bible. Our primary passage of Scripture is in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. And uh, I'm also going to share an, an additional just verse of Scripture that's very personal to me uh, at the very end of the message today and, um, and give you a couple of examples in my life uh, of this that when it rears its head, one comical, sometimes not so comical, but we all get stressed out. And so I'm going to get rolling right away with some of the stress that I have in my life to identify with you today, share with you some of the things I got going on. Go ahead and pull that first slide up, Cheryl. Now, see, I'm, this is go, this is going to go in a different direction today. That young lady that you see on your screen, her name's Sophia the First, and she's one of our Disney princesses that has a big role in our house. Okay, and uh, just to give you a little background on Sophia. All right, she was a girl living in the village, doing all right, and she became a princess overnight. All right, and that's that's how it worked out with her. All right, and we've known her for a little over four years now. We've known her for a little over four years now. Um, uh, since my daughter really fell in love with her at an early age, and, uh, and so there's her. There's another one who's very big in our house. Uh, I think more of you know her than, uh, than Sophia. That's Rapunzel. You know the story of Rapunzel, the long, flowing blonde hair, the evil woman who stole her as a, as a child, and uh, at, at, at her 18th birthday, she meets a guy named Flynn Ryder, who we know as Eugene Fitzherbert, and uh, they fall in love. And all this other stuff happened. They defeat the evil woman. She gets back to her rightful parents. She's a princess. It's great. We love it. We celebrate it all the time in our house. We dance. We sing about it. It's great. All right? Our latest Disney princess who, who shows up in our house quite a bit, and she's uh, my daughter, my youngest, was actually her for Halloween this year. And with her blonde hair, it really went well. But it's okay. We love it. It was great. She was, uh, she was Moana. And uh, Moana is, uh, I'm, I'm going to just, you know, I, I believe she's got this Polynesian vibe going. She's a Polynesian princess. Um, her dream and her destiny is to sail the sea so she can save her family and all of these other things. And it's a great story and everything else. Um, and so in my life as a father to two beautiful girls, all right, our world has re revolved around Disney princesses and it's been great and it's been awesome and we dance and we sing about them all the time until recently there's this new disney character that's entered our uh, our house and entered the scene and it's caused some unwanted stress in my life and this is the picture right there that's miguel miguel is in a movie called coco and we've watched that movie a lot of times now, I'm going to tell you why Miguel's caused me some stress, all right? Uh, first, the story about Miguel is basically, and some of you parents are going to get this. When I say this, you're going to be like, you're right, if you've seen this and you've got little kids, all right? The story of Coco and Miguel is basically, it's basically the Hispanic version of Moana, except, except it's got a male character instead of a female, all right? And instead of selling the sea to save his family, he uses music to do it, and it's this great story and everything else. But my daughters, particularly Zoe, our oldest, all right? Remember, she's five now. She loves this movie. And one day recently, it came to my attention through my wife communicating to me that, that Zoe more or less communicated to my wife that if Miguel were real, He would be her boyfriend. So I called her over and I got her down and I got down on her level and I looked at her and I smiled and I said, Zoe, is, is this true? And if y'all know Zoe, you, you know, she looked at me with those big blue, beautiful eyes and she smiled. She pushes her hair. I said, is this true? And she said, yeah, daddy. And I looked at her, and just as lovingly as I could, I looked at her, I said, no bueno. <laughs> no, no, no. And I did what any good dad would do. I went to the DVD player, I got out the movie Coco, and I smashed it. <laughs> and I looked right at her, and I said, Miguel, no mas. No, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I just kidding. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. But, 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 but. 
Uh, I I, I kind of wanted to. I didn't do that though. But I'm gonna tell you something. Like on like you think, and that's funny. And we had a good time with it. We laughed. We've been laughing about it a lot lately. But you know what it made me think about? It's coming. And I don't even. And I don't even want to think. I mean, you've. Look, I'm biased. I don't even have to be biased, though. You can be unbiased. You've seen those girls, man. I'm telling you what, man. When they get to be teenagers, I'm going to have my hands full. All right? And it's coming. It causes stress. And we'll talk about that kind of stress, that anxiety. All right? But for a lot of you in here today, your stress is different. Oh, I see some dads and some young. I, I see them. They're looking at their wives going, yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a gun collect. I'm going to do it all. I'm, whatever. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be the stereotype. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I'm going to be the stereotype when a young man comes to the house. I'm going to scare him to death. All right. So um, but there's a lot of you in here. Your stress is much more real and it's really serious and, and you deal with it on a daily basis. And maybe it involves stress uh, around this right here. Maybe this picture right here is more about you. Maybe it's around your job. All right. And and and. Here's the thing about job stress, and I thought about this. It's not even in my notes, but I thought about this. We spend more time, if you work full-time, all right, if you have a full-time job, which many, many people do, and, 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 I want, and I'm going to go ahead and say this. I'm going to put this out here. Let, hey, being a stay-at-home mother is, is absolutely a full-time job, okay? It is absolutely. Oh, oh, listen. Oh, listen. Listen. <laughs> let, hey, you couldn't pay me to do it. You couldn't. It's hard. I let, it's tough. It is tough. So I, I'm talking about any kind of any kind of, of, of job where you work, let's say, full time. You spend more time conscious and awake there than you do anywhere else. And so, if you're not happy there, or you're not feeling some satisfaction there, a great deal of stress. Maybe you're unhappy. Maybe you're unfulfilled. You have all these deadlines, and maybe you've got difficulties at work, and maybe you can't stand your boss. Maybe you can't stand the people that you work with. Maybe you hate the hours that you work. May, listen, it could be never ending, all right? So maybe you have that, and it's a real thing, and you need some prayers because it's very difficult. Maybe you need some relief of this stress in your life because it's very difficult. Maybe for some of you it's not job stress. Maybe it could be related to this next one right here. Maybe it's financial stress. Maybe it's like every day, no matter what, listen, your bills, it's like, man, I just paid the power bill last month. They're going to bill me again. i got to pay it again this month. I mean, like, what's up with that? I mean, I'm like, the bills keep coming, right? You get one paid off, and the next one comes in the mail. you got these bills to deal with. you got all these things, debt, all these things going. And I, and I like this. I like this picture, and I'm going to tell you how I can relate to this picture right here. Many of you can, too. There's a word right up there. I can't reach it because I'm a little bit short. Crisis. Because you get everything taken care of and everything handled, and then something happens totally unexpected that you did not think was going to come down the path. And it can totally mess up everything that you've got going on. All right? You get your head above water just enough to breathe, but you have a financial crisis. And for us, it happened last week. It was a double whammy. Our cars needed work. And so we take our cars to get new brakes, and we take our cars to get an oil change, and we spend a little bit of money on all that. We go to pick it up. We kind of got that planned out. Like, I mean, like it's going to set us back a little bit because it's a few hundred dollars to get all that done. And I go pick it up, and I'm, and I'm, 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 just, I'm just glad that when I go pick it up, I'm like, okay, I, I'm just glad to pick my car up, and it's going to be safe and ready and good to go now for a while. But when I go to pick it up and check out, the guy looks at me and goes, man, you need new tires bad. I'm like, you're just, I, sure I do, Sure. Right? I'm like, you're just saying that, whatever. And he goes, no, come with me. And so we go out, and we look, and I get underneath the car, and I look at the back tires, and it, from, the, from the outside of the car where we all look at the car, everything looks good with the tread and all, but on the inside of my back tires, this just chewed up, and you can see the wire. So I, not only do I need two new tires, I need a rear alignment. I need all this stuff done. And it's like, just take it. Like, I don't know, here, just whatever. Whatever has to be done. And so I just tell my wife after that, I'm like, okay, we can't eat for three months, but we'll be all right. Well, <laughs> we're about to go on an extended fast. No, <laughs> but like, it's a it, it's a crisis, right? And it causes some financial stress. And for those of us that are married, that always leads to this right here. It always leads to a little bit of marital stress. We've got that. All of us do. We we listen. We deal with it from time to time. Listen, maybe right now you just can't connect. There's a dissatisfaction in your marriage. 
Maybe there's a growing divide between you and your spouse. And maybe at least, and listen, I'm going to use some words right now that I think all of us feel from time to time in our marriages, anger, resentment, miscommunication after miscommunication. So maybe it's going on right there. Hey, maybe, maybe it's not in your marriage. Maybe this right here uh, describes you right here, may, whether you're a, a male or a female, maybe it's single parenting. And th these dual roles are just about to drive you crazy. All right, because listen, you're constantly juggling all the responsibilities and you never get a break. Never. And it's got to be tough. And I feel for you. And I'm telling you right now, listen, I'm praying for you. I pray for our single parents in our church a lot. I want you to know that. You need to know that. I spend time in prayer for you because I can't imagine the journey that you're on. It's very difficult. We love you and we're here to support you. All right. And maybe you would maybe I've said all these things and you're sitting there and you're going, I would do anything to experience that that kind of stress or the kind of stresses that you've talked about, because this next picture describes your stress right here. Maybe you're just alone. And you're like, man, I would do anything to have marital stress. I would do anything to have relationship stress. And maybe but maybe this is you and you're so tired. You're so tired of waiting and wanting and you're so sick of all the cliches and you're so sick of all the questions and your desire is to share life with someone and you you just you're not right now and it stresses you out it legitimately stresses you out and maybe hey we got people of all ages in here maybe this next picture describes your stress because it's real school all right i know a lot of our kids are back here right now and i kind of talked to them up here about it a little bit but hey it ain't just kids there's a lot of adults who try. Now, I want you to think about this. Some of the things we've talked about already. Imagine that. Now, let's pile some school on top of it because a lot of you guys are going back to school and you're trying to further your education. You're trying to do this while juggling all those other things. That can definitely lead to stress. And listen, it, it, there's, more, there's more competition than there was a generation ago to get into better colleges. It's more demanding. All right. So you got all that. And then maybe, maybe this, there's the last picture I want to show you what it has to do with stress. I just want you to, I want you to get a picture. And I, I want this to speak to you wherever you're at and whoever you are. Maybe this last picture describes you right here. Maybe you're just filled with anxiety. And you can't have any peace in your life because you're stressed by all the what ifs in your life. This can be especially debilitating. I know I'm going to share a little bit with you about this because I, I deal with this myself on a personal level. I deal with this. All right, so here's the way I want to look at it today. No matter how you break it down, no matter how you approach this subject, all right, here's the truth that we all have to face today. When it comes to stress, this is a very basic statement, and we're going to kind of springboard from here. Number one is this, is it affects us all. It just does. We can't get away from it. It's there. It affects all of us. And, I mean, we see... I, uh, you are riding down the road in your car, speaking of cars, you know, you ride down your road in a car and you're thinking about some of the things going on in your life and you're like, I don't know, like, y'all drive sometimes and you don't know how you get somewhere? Because you're so just spaced out with all the problems of life and you're riding down the road and you see somebody and the person in front of you has a bumper sticker that says, too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to give you some stress right now. I'm going to ram the back of your car. <laughs> because that don't describe my life let's just give you something right now all right but like we think about that and we've all got our own problems we all have our own personal struggles and we take those sometimes and what we allow it to do is to just dictate our lives it controls us it's a killer it affects us spiritually and so we're going to look at God's word for some guidance and some application today. And this is a pretty familiar passage of scripture, but I'm hoping that, open, I'm hoping that God will open your eyes to it in a new way today. And we're going to break it down and we're going to read about it. It's in Philippians. So I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt my best to read it all. And then we're going to get into some application. This is what the Bible says in Philippians chapter four, starting in verse four. Paul speaking to the church. He says this, by the way, the book of Philippians, I say, I'm not interrupting myself yet. The book of Philippians is what scholars and theologians call Paul's joy letter. It's his joy letter. And he wrote it in prison. Give you some context, okay? He wrote it while he was in prison. So he's finishing it up. 
It's four chapters long. You can sit down in 20 or 30 minutes and read the entire book, all right? This is the last chapter. These are some of his last words, his last bits of instruction to the church. He says this, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone that the Lord is at hand. Do not, this is, Philippians 4, verse 6 should be some of our life verses that we take today. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, this is where, we're gonna, this is where the rubber's going to hit the road today. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. He's in, remember, he's in prison. They couldn't go see him. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. What he's saying there is this. Some of your translations, I know how to be poor, and I know how to be rich. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All right? This thing about stress, it affects us all. We know that, okay? There's a lot to be taken from this, but I want to give you a few things that all of us can do to deal with it today, all right? To help us overcome it. Because, listen, I can't, I wish, I wish that I could say this. Hey, we're going to take stress today, and we're going to defeat it. And it will never rear its head in our lives again. But we can't do that. Because it's always going to come up. We can overcome it when it does. All right? We're always going to have it in our lives to some degree. So here's what we can do. And this is in, this is straight from Scripture today. The next point is this. Here's what we can do about it. Number two is pray about it. Pray about it. Cry out to God. Share your heart with Him. Speak to Him. Paul says, pray about it and submit it to God. Because the Lord is at hand. He's there. He wants to hear our voice. And He wants us to share our thoughts with Him. He'll give us comfort. He'll be there. He's always there to listen to us. And, and listen, as for our lives and the things that this world, that they, that they bear down on us, they're going to be there to some degree, but we can remember this, and there's one thing that we've got to do, and I'm going to tell you, listen, I, I love how when I'm studying Scripture sometimes, and I be, God will do this for you. God will absolutely do this for you. When, you'll, when you're studying one passage of Scripture, if, you, if you've studied other Scripture, He'll bring something else to mind, and you'll be like, hey, man, this matches up. His Word is true. His Word is true. Because I know that His Word says this, in this world... We will have trouble, but, but our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. And so we think about this. I, I've gotta, I, I have to do this. Listen, I have to do this next point. I have to do this next point in order to stay sane. Some of you are like, you're not doing a very good job. Um, <laughs> I've got to do this next thing in order to stay sane in this world. I have to. I have to do this, and I would encourage you to do it too. Number three is this. Let your joy come from Jesus. Let your joy come from Jesus and what he's done for you and his love for you and the hope that you can put in him. Let your joy come from him. Remember, remember where Paul is at during this letter. I've told you this already. He's in prison. He is in prison. And listen, I know that none of us today want to be in prison in, in 2018. Could you imagine what prison was like a couple of thousand years ago? He's in prison, and he's, he's teaching us a great lesson about our attitude. And what he's saying is this. Our inner attitudes don't have to reflect our outward circumstances. We can have joy in Jesus. And in this world, it's very easy to let 
our circumstances discourage us, but if our joy comes from the things of this world, even, even the good things now, if our joy comes in the things of this world, even the good things, we will be an emotional roller coaster. Because we'll be up and down all the time. If your joy comes only from your spouse and that relationship, you are not just putting a lot of pressure on them, you're putting an impossible amount of pressure on them. Because if you depend solely on them, it, 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 it can't be done. Your joy needs to come from the Lord. And listen, if you I, I'm going to challenge you today, married couples. I'm going to challenge you today. My wife and I, we take this challenge, and we take it quite often because, hey, sometimes, I, listen, y'all. a lot of y'all maybe know this, but some of y'all really don't. Like, we're very different. My wife and I, we're very different. She hates a lot of the things that I love. She hates basketball. She doesn't like sports that much. And the ones she does, she roots for the wrong team. <laughs> I'll leave that in my notes. All right, so, it's true. I love, like this, I, I'm, I'm sitting there this weekend, and some of you, some of y'all are going to be like, oh, yeah. Hey, I joke about it sometimes. I love to watch golf this weekend because it's the Masters. There's something magical about the Masters. She's like, what are you watching? She, well, we, don't have, we don't have a lot of the same interests. We argue about some things sometimes, but listen, if you'll let your joy come from the Lord, I, and I share this with her all the time, I, and, and we do, we talk about this, we challenge each other. Let your joy come from Jesus. See if your marriage doesn't improve. See if your marriage doesn't improve, all right? If your joy comes only from, listen, a great work environment, you're bound for disappointment. If your joy comes only from your kids, you're bound for heartbreak. If your joy comes only from money, good luck. Good luck, all right? We can't let these things control us. Listen, we can have concern for them. Yes, we can have concern, but we can't allow this fear in our lives because here's what I've learned about those two things. Concern for something drives us to action. When we have fear, it paralyzes us. There's a difference. Concern drives us to action, but fear paralyzes us. And so, listen, and, and, and it's, this, this next thing is going to seem tough to do, but I'm telling you, I believe by, the, by, by Scripture, this is what God is instructing us to do. Because I never said this was going to be easy. Stress is something that affects us all, and it comes in a million different ways, okay? So if we want to try to deal with it and overcome it, this is what we've got to do. The next point is this. Number four, we've got to train our thoughts. You've got to control your mind. The list of things that Paul tells us to think about. It's one of the final points that he's trying to drive home in this letter. And I want you to think about some of these words, and I'm going to give you some examples of some opposites of these things. And you tell me which ones we struggle with. You think about this. He says, whatever is true. Whatever is honorable. Whatever is pure. Whatever is lovely. Whatever is commendable, whatever is excellent, whatever is worthy of praise. And then he says this, think about these things. Some of your translations say, dwell on these things. And I want you to think about the opposite of those words. The opposite of true is false. We let things that aren't even true control our mind. And almost everything, and listen, I'm not here today to tell us that we, can't, that we don't need to go out in the world and reach people for Jesus, but here's what I'm going to tell you. Almost everything we see in the culture that we live in today is a lie. The, things that, that the messages that we are bombarded with is a lie. I'll give you an example right now. You know what TV tells us? TV tells us that sex without marriage is not only okay, but you're crazy if you don't do it. 85 to 90% of the relationships on TV are outside of marriage, and it involves sex. And, and you know what God's word says? Not true. That's false. The word honorable means important or distinguished. The opposite of that, <laughs> y'all tell me if this describes our world. The opposite of that is petty. Petty. If, you don't, if you've never experienced something that pe petty, I would encourage you to do this. Scroll through your Facebook feed today. Scroll through it. It's full of petty stuff, all right? I mean, I, I, I thought about this. 
this is how petty our world is. This is what could, I honestly can stress us out. We could get stressed out by going to Walmart. Because this world wants us, instead of thinking about God, this world wants us to think more about the kind of deodorant that we wear, the kind of shower gel that we pick out, the kind of toothpaste that we use, the kind of laundry detergent that we use. I, years ago, one of my very first messages I ever preached at the church I used to serve at, I actually did this one day. I went to Walmart and I counted all that stuff. I counted it to see what kind of choices we had. Do you realize, and this was years ago, 200 types of deodorant. 100 types of shower gels, 90 types of toothpaste, 150 laundry detergents, 30 types of toilet paper. <laughs> Ladies, how about this? I get stressed when I walk by there, when I go to Walmart, because when I go to Walmart, as soon as I go in, a lot of times I got to turn left, right? You either turn left, turn right, you turn left, you go by the makeup aisle. I just get stressed going by there. The, the, the choices, the selection, the pressure, all these things, right? And guys, hey, we're the same way. You go to an Academy Sporting Goods store or like Dick's Sporting Goods, you walk in, you're like, ah. <laughs> but we don't know what to do when we get there, right? I mean, like all these things, right? All of these things and the promises, the promises that these products make us that are just a lie. Use the right type of shower gel and women will fall out of the sky. Literally. Well, there they are. Look here. I'm on. It's under not my fair. Mo I mean, come on. Really? It's just we get caught up in this stuff. It's not important. It's petty. Petty. He uses the word just, which is the root word of justice. It means fair and desiring peace and respecting others. The opposite corruption. <laughs> we see that in our world. Pure means innocent or wholesome and clean. The opposite of that is impure or dirty and morally wrong, especially in sexual matters. I got that definition from the internet. I don't even have to look at like a biblical dictionary for that. Lovely means beautiful. The, the opposite of that, horrible. Commendable means admirable. The opposite means reprehensible. He goes on and on. These, these things... Think about where we're more often pulled towards. Which side of this we're pulled towards. And where we let our minds go. He goes on, he says, listen, if it's excellent, if it's praiseworthy. So my, my challenge to you today is this. Where is your mind? Where are your thoughts? Where, what do you allow your mind to think about? On the things of God or on the things of this world? Because we've got to train our thoughts. And listen, and, and if you're busy about things that aren't of God, I want you to know something today. Listen, I'm not here to beat you up, but I want you to accept that you've got to train your thoughts. And I want to tell you two things that if you start to train your thoughts are two things you've got to do when it comes to this, okay? One is something that is an encouragement to you today, and the second is a result that you'll see of it. The first thing is this. Don't, listen, make no mistake about it. Paul says right, it takes practice. It takes practice. You're going to fail along the way sometimes, right? You're going to allow some of these impure, all these words we talked about, you're going to allow some of the opposites of those to, to creep in from time to time. It takes practice. And I'm not saying that we'll ever get there and we'll ever be perfect. What I'm saying is this, we'll get better. We'll be able to train our thoughts more and more towards the things of God and we won't allow the things of this earth to stress us out. And Paul says, listen, I'm, I'm leading by example. He, he tell, in, the, in Scripture, he says, he says, hey, whatever you've seen in me, practice these things. And as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we should be setting the tone in our own lives and then influence the world around us. That's how people go, I don't know how to talk to people about Jesus. I don't know how to lead them to Jesus. I don't know what to do. I don't know that. Hey, it starts with how you live your life. It starts by, do people see that in you? Can they see, can they see something different in you? Like you don't allow the things, some of these things to just drive, just to stress you out and to like control you. He says, what you've seen in me, practice these things. And when we do that, if we'll start to practice these things, God's word gives us a promise. 
And I think this right, I think this promise is something that a lot of us could use a lot more of in our life. And it's B, it's this, is it brings peace. It brings peace. I mean, we all want a little bit more peace in our lives, right? We all do. And so how important are your thoughts and the things that you allow your mind to think about when it comes to stress and just your life and how your life plays out? I've shared this before in another message, but I want us to actually put some application to it today. And you can write this. I think it'll be up on the screen long enough for some of y'all, if you're taking notes, to write this down. And I, I want you to really think about this right here. This next slide right here. This, this kind of plays out, right? A thought reaps an attitude. An attitude reaps a behavior. A behavior reaps habit. Habits reap a lifestyle. A lifestyle reaps a destiny. Now, let me play that out for you. Let's talk about some of the things that are most common in our lives. Let's talk about our marriage. <laughs> All right. My spouse could do something, could really upset me or confuse me or kind of get me on edge a little bit and make me angry. Now, I could take that and I could go, you know what? I'm just going to be mad at her. Or I can do what I've really, I've, I've prayed about, and, I, and I, I try to do this. I don't all, I'm not always perfect. That's, that's, she, that was my wife, she was here, she'd be like, hey, she'd be running around. Um, I, but that's what I try, I, try, I try to say, God, you show me. You show me what I can do. All right? So if I have a bad attitude about my marriage, well, that's going to show itself in how, in my behavior around my wife, and the, thing, and the way I treat her, the way I talk to her, the things I do, just sour all the time, right? And, and if that, that behavior is going to become a habit, that's the way I'm going to be doing it quite often, because I'm going to be, because I'm going to tell you something, listen, you don't have to look very far if you're married. Don't nudge your spouse. You do not have to look very far to get angry at something that they do. He heard it in here. She was like, uh-uh. No, I don't. All right, so, but that behavior will reap a habit. It, that, that behavior will become habitual in your life. That then becomes your lifestyle. That becomes your marriage. You walk around bitter at each other all the time. You're upset. You're mad. And then that becomes the destiny of your marriage. Money? I gotta have. 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 Right? That's gonna be your attitude. You you allow your thought to say, I gotta have this, I gotta have that. That becomes your attitude. You know what your behavior then becomes? You buy a lot of things you don't need. You allow yourself to get into a ton of debt. That so it reaps bad habits. That becomes your lifestyle. Your lifestyle of being in debt becomes your destiny. And you're always financially in crisis. All right? Your job. Hey, you know, people tell me all the time, they're like, man, you, you must, it's gotta, you got it great. Pastor, every job's stressful. Every job's stressful. And I can allow a lot of the things, like I could allow a lot of the things that I have to deal with to really bring me down and to have a bad attitude. And, and some of y'all maybe have been around people. Like, I'm, not, I'm not trying to point out other pastors or negative. I'm, I'm just saying, like, it could affect pastors. It could affect people that work at the plant. It could, it could affect anybody. But you, go, you go to your job, and you're like negative thoughts. You're like, man, I don't want to go today. The alarm clock goes off, and you're like, how many times can I hit snooze? I don't even need to shower today. It's fine. I showered two days ago. All right, I'm just going to hit snooze. <laughs> I'm going to hit snooze. I'm going to stay in bed as long as I can. I'm going to wait as long as I possibly can to get out of bed because I don't want to go to work. I'll go the back roads to miss traffic. I'll come in and clock in. Like if I, I used to have things. Listen, I used to have a job I hated, and you know what I figured out? I figured out I, I used to have to clock in. I used, to, I used to have to punch the clock. I figured it out that I could punch in seven minutes late, and it wouldn't matter. Because of the way the computer system was worked out. So I was like, I got to be like, I had to punch in at 9 o'clock. I'm like, I can clock in at 9.07 every day and they'll never say nothing to me. It'll, it'll show up that I'm on time. What do I got to do to get there by 9.07? I, I mean, like, we have this ba these bad thoughts, right? That leads to a bad attitude. When I'm at work, nobody wants to be around me. That behavior, the habit, 
becomes my lifestyle, I wind up being a lifelong miserable worker. All these things take place. All these things are true. All these things are true. But we have got to train our minds to be Christ-like or we'll be guided and gunked up with the things of this world. We will be. All right? And so the last thing I want to share with you today is this. If you want to be more, if you want to be more stress-free, this goes for all of us. Number five is to learn to be content. And I used very careful language there. I didn't just say, just do it. Do it. Be content. Because you can't just do it. You have to learn to be content. It has to be something that you learn to do. It's not something that comes naturally. The grass is always greener. We always see something and we want more. Always. Paul says, I have learned to be content. We have to learn it as well. And it starts, I'm telling you this, it starts with an attitude of thankfulness. It starts with an attitude of thankfulness. And I've got three points right here under this learn to be content. And I'm going to go through them very quickly. A, B, C. A is this. Learn to be content. Be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for what you have. I mean, do I need to go over our first world problems? Let's be real. I mean, do y'all want to look at like, and, and I know, listen, hey, somebody, I, I learned a lesson a long time ago, and I, and I really do try to apply it to my life. Like, somebody's always going to have it better, and somebody's always going to have it worse. Be thankful for what you got. Be thankful. That's how you can learn to be content. So be thankful for what you have. And this second one, I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but like, it, it, it really does apply to our lives. Paul says this, B is this, be thankful for what you don't have. You ever thought that God loves you so much he gave you just what you needed? He protects our heart and our minds for the things that we don't have because we, he, he knows we don't need it. And we live in this, I, I know, hey, we live in this world. We live in a lottery mentality world. If I just had this, if I just had that, just had it, I could just get that. If my spouse would just do this, if my kids would just do this, if my boss would just do this, you wish, we wish, we wish. And, I, and I, I think about this. Somebody told me this a long time ago. You sit there and wish, you wish, you wish, you wish your life away. I used to do it. I used to do it all the time. Hey, I taught. I taught school. And I love teaching. But I, there'd be times of the year where I'd wake up on Monday and I'm like, man, I just wish it was Friday. And you go through the whole week wishing it's Friday. Man, it's Tuesday. I wish it's Friday. It's Wednesday. Hump day. Almost there. Like, you just wish your life away. And we've come really full circle with this last thought right here. And it kind of started with, our, with point number three today. Be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for what you don't have. And you can do that if you let your joy come from Jesus. He's always there to help. Always. And, and, and learning to be content is something for all of us that we have to learn to do. Because no matter what we have or what we don't have, no matter how our marriage, our kids, our work, our car, our house, our possessions, all of these things, the, the, the possibility to want more is always going to be there. And you go, well, what? And I... I, I, I appreciate the platform and the opportunity to share with you my weaknesses and my struggle. I think it helps you understand that I'm just like you. I just, I am. You go, well, what do you struggle with? What, what is something you struggle to be content with? You ready? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be really honest with you. Bigger church. More people. I, I'm all about sharing the gospel. I'm all about sharing the gospel. So I just think sometimes we do that. I'm like, well, why aren't they coming? What, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with this church? Is there something wrong with the people here? What's going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? Why not? Come on, God, bring them in. Let's tear down some more walls. Bring more. Bigger church, bigger, like more people. Grow, grow, grow. Well, that church down the road, this. That church down the road, that. How, you think pastors don't compare? You think we don't look at our buddies this and, and sometimes be like, man, it, we're human. We're human. And this verse, this next verse, 
it rocked my world a couple of weeks ago, and it, and it really changed my perspective on things. So I was like, all right, God, what are you trying to show me? Look at this verse. This spoke to me specifically. 1 Peter 5.2. This is, listen. Care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. I love you. I'm so thankful for what God has given me in this church. And, and I'm going to tell you what this verse made me think about. Cheryl probably doesn't even remember this conversation that we had. Cheryl and I have been working together side by side in ministry for many years. And there was a time when we were really struggling before this church ever came into existence. And we both were stressed and we both were like, we want something new, we want something better. And I remember saying to her one day, I'm like, man, I, listen, I'll take a small country church with 40 people in it. That's all I want. I just want, I want to get out of where I'm at and I just want this. I, I'd be so happy if God would just give me a small little country church with 40 people in it. And you know what God's done? Despite how that, those thoughts and despite how just selfish and ego-driven that statement was, God's taken and blessed beyond my wildest imaginations. And so I love this church and I love you and I'm thankful for what God has blessed me with. And I want the same for you because stress is always going to rear its head, but we can overcome it through joy in Jesus. And listen, maybe today we've talked about a subject and you were just, maybe you're torn up today. Maybe you're just torn up as stress has just been killing you. Let me encourage you today. Do not feel like the Lone Ranger because we're all in this together. We're all in this together and we all struggle. So do you need to pray about it? Do you need to find your joy in Jesus today? Do you even know him today? Do you allow any of your peace to come from him? Or do you say, I don't really even know Jesus. I've looked everywhere but in him to find my joy. Maybe you need to submit your mind and submit your thoughts to him. Maybe you need to pray to be content. God, teach me to be content. Help me learn how to be content with what I have. If you're overwhelmed with all of that and all that life has thrown at you and, and what you're dealing with, we're going to sing a song, and it makes me think about my attitude towards this church right now. We sang it on Wednesday night, too, and every time I sing this song, man, I just want to just, I just, I don't even know what I want to do. I want to fall to my knees. I want to get on my face. I want to just say, God, you're awesome. And if you're overwhelmed by all that's going on in your life right now, let me encourage you to do this. Be overwhelmed by the presence of God in your life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together this morning.